Right is sir. We are here. We are live. We are doing it. So, Wes, uh, welcome Hello. to the Bizarre Show. You know, we've uh, never yeah. opened a show welcoming the audience to our show. That's okay. Yeah, they, they, they come to know how we are not very hospitable around here. <laughs> no, we're definitely not. This week, you have brought another fabulous film to the table. Again, Debatable. just yeah. like... No, no, no. No, don't sell yourself short. Just <laughs> like the people under the stairs, I had not seen the guest. Yeah, I had heard about it. I had heard... A few things here and there, not very much, but um, you had suggested it and I got to watch it. So thank you again. You're welcome. Yeah, this one's, I haven't seen it for a few years, so it was funny to re, uh, to look at it through different eyes because my eyes, I'm, I'm, I have COVID eyes now. Um, so it was interesting <laughs> and it's not exactly the way I remember it. It wasn't quite as fun to watch this time. I still liked it, but it wasn't, for some reason, I think I was at a Bruin view, like in 2015. Like I, it was still kind of an underground, not underground, but it was like a newer movie that was out. I think I saw a Bruin view of it in Columbus and we had a great time watching it. And then I think I've watched it once on my own and then this time, this week. And it wasn't quite as fun, but I did like it. Okay, so this was only your second viewing of this movie. Third. Okay, this was my first. And you didn't, uh, know, that you didn't know what to expect at all. Did you think it was more of a horror movie or what'd you think? Yes, when you suggested it, I sort of Googled it and it looks very much like it could be a horror movie. I didn't expect so much action in this. Yeah, and I don't like action movies, man. I'm you not don't. Like big on no. This is, this is a little bit different vibe than like an act, like a like a blockbuster action film. Exactly. This is definitely a lot different than that. It is. It's not an action movie. It's definitely not. It's not a horror movie. It's some kind of unholy hybrid. And then the, the score and the music make it a really weird vibe of the whole movie. All right, sir. Do you want to dive right into the guest? I think so. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, I'm still kind of feeling weird about this movie, but we need we need to we need to get into it so we can we can flush it out. We need to break it down. Yeah. Mrs. Peterson. Can I um help you? My name is David. The Guest is a 2014 American thriller film directed by Adam Wingard and written by Simon Barrett. It tells the story of a U.S. soldier called David who unexpectedly visits the Peterson family, introducing himself as a friend of their son who died in combat in Afghanistan. After he's been staying in their home for a couple of days, a series of deaths occur and the daughter Anna suspects David is connected to them. The film premiered at the Sundance Film Festival on January 17th, 2014. It was released into theaters in the United Kingdom on September 5th, 2014, and the U.S. on September the 17th. Despite commercial disappointment at the box office, grossing only $2.7 million against a $5 million budget, The Guest was praised by critics, in particular for Steven's performance, and has since developed a cult following, which you and I are now a part of, technically. Yeah. So our movie opens with Spencer and Laura Peterson, with their children Luke and Anna. They are coping with the loss of their eldest son, Caleb, to the war in Afghanistan. They are visited by David Collins, a former army sergeant who claims he was Caleb's best friend. He tells the family he wanted to visit them as a way to help Caleb take care of them. He's polite, he's friendly, and Laura invites him to stay as long as he wishes. Well, you're not just saying that to be polite now because you don't need to be. No, I'm not. Please stay. It's, it's nice having you here, and I would love to hear more about you and Caleb. All right, Sean. So yeah, just to go back into, or just to go into our actor, uh, Dan Stevens. The only reason I knew who that was was because I had watched the first two seasons of Downton Abbey back when it was like a big thing on Netflix, I think like in like 2013, like the year before this movie came out. He plays uh, a big part in the first three or four seasons that I only watched two. I'm not really into English soap operas so much, but it was a really, really good show. And he plays kind of a chubby, kind of mild mannered Englishman. He is an Englishman and that's what he's known as. So the fact that he was in this movie, I thought was crazy because I was taken aback by his performance because he really did transform himself from like this like kind of schlubby, well-spoken British man into like this uh, kind of almost Southern speaking uh, Iraq war veteran or um, Afghanistani war veteran. Oh no, ma'am, I couldn't impose on you at all. I'm, 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 I'll be on my way here. I just wanted to say my piece. You really can't tell that he's British in this movie. Now that he did a great job and it, he he was chopping at the bit to get out of that like uh, Downton Abbey thing. Absolutely bonkers it's just such a playful film and I read the guest laughed from beginning to end it was one of the funniest scripts I'd read it just 
reminded me of all those films I'd loved growing up. Those John Carpenter movies, the Terminator films. It's a fun one. It's really crazy. So he got himself into some crazy shape and turned himself into like a heartthrob looking dude and took him like two weeks to get the accent down. Some guy from like Kentucky or something that had been over to Afghanistan. So that's pretty crazy that he was able to do that. And I, I'm not sure what he's been doing since this movie because I don't I don't pay attention to him. Uh, I don't know really, I'm not a fan of his career except for the two things I've seen him in. But he's a great actor and his dialect in this is perfect. He transformed himself into the perfect looking part for this role. And uh, I thought that was really cool. Without knowing anything about him, would you know that he was like this kind of schlubby British actor at no. one point? No. Okay. Nope, not at all. Yeah, so th it was really kind of cool to see that. So as David is staying with the Petersons, he hears of Spencer's troubles at work. He's only been there for what, like four years, but he's got a degree. So boom, suddenly he's regional manager. I'm not. And he sees Luke return home with a bruise on his face caused by bullies at school. The next day, David and Luke follow the bullies to a bar where David beats them all up. great little yeah, action because that's scene. where that's where kids go after school they explain why they're there they do it's still stupid it's um, very but, stupid and the way it plays out is perfect with the uh, the drinks the uh, the blowjobs and the cosmopolitans and the the fireball with the tabasco sauce and it's it's perfect scene um it's a little ridiculous but a little again, bit this is the first moment that we're gonna get to where we're, we we know that this guy's a little off kilter now we know that this guy is off of, off of his rocker a little bit we know he's off his rocker and he's a little bit bad Badass. He's a lot bit badass. Mm -hmm. He then uses his knowledge of the law as well as a bribe to convince the bartender not to tell anyone. I don't know how the cops would feel about you selling to minors, so maybe don't tell them about this little incident that we had. You didn't. See, or you saw who did it, but they got away. And here's for your trouble, or here's for the damages. And he puts on a couple hun hundos, C notes. He does that through the whole movie. All he's got is oh, just yeah. a giant wad of hundred dollar bills. And then, yeah, at one point, uh, the kid says, "Are you rich?" And he goes, "Cash is easy to get." So that evening, David goes to the yeah. party with a reluctant Anna. That's a weird thing for a parent to do again. You know what I mean? Kind of. Invite him to a par invite him to your party. Party. It's a little strange. Uh, okay. Yeah. A complete yeah, sure. stranger. It's a and little it's weird. Like, it's almost like that these people are in high school, but only the kid is in high school. The girl and her friends are like 20, 21, and they're just hanging out and doing whatever, but it seems like a high school party that they go to, except for the fact that there's some older dudes in there that are the, the guy from Grandma's Boy who plays the robot. Please sit <laughs> on my face. Yeah, they run into a bunch of weird characters at that party, but yeah, let, let's talk about the party. Where he makes a good impression with her friends, even oh, saving her friend Kristen from her violent ex-boyfriend. Yeah, he smashes his head up against the wall. He's like, hey, bud, what are you doing? I'm just talking to my ex-girlfriend. He's like, Psh! smashes right against a picture right, right off the wall. Sorry about your picture, ma'am. And she goes, <laughs> oh, that's okay. Did you want to see the rest of the house? Yeah, so as a thank you to David for saving her, they fuck. Yeah, she's like, I'm not sure that you're really into this. It's almost like you're a robot or something. He's like, yes, ma'am, I am. I'm really into it. And all of a sudden, now I've turned him into a sling blade. <laughs> yes, ma'am, I reckon I am into it. Mm -hmm. You got any French fried potatoes down in your in your pants? After they're finished, David asks one of Anna's friends, Craig, where he can buy a gun. I need my guns and my, 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 my biscuits and mustard. Mm -hmm. Anna had a fight with her boyfriend, said, I want to go home. And since David can't get drunk for reasons unknown at this time, he or drives high. them home. He can't get or, a high. God, what a bummer. Uh, well, he's, we're starting to think, we're supposed to start to think that this guy might not be who he says he is. Is that the price you pay for to become a super soldier? You could never get a buzz ever again. Would it be worth it to you? No, dude, I just want to be a normal person. Yeah, I want to I want to get my buzz on, yep. get my, play my golf. Well, it would be kind of cool to smash a picture and then have a girl want to bang me. That would be cool. Right. I've tried it once, it didn't work. When a suspicious Anna calls the military base to ask about David, she is told that he presumably died a week earlier. The call alerts a private corporation called the KPG, headed by Major Carver, who assembles a special forces team and heads for the Petersons' home. It was just like all of a sudden they found out that this person's name came up from a, a, a report that was made by uh, by some kind of 20-year-old girl. He all of a sudden put together SEAL Team 6. First things first, <laughs> let's go ahead and get a hold of like the household like father or mother and like say, like by the way, the person that's staying with you is not who they say they are. 
He meets Craig and his friends to buy the gun. I put all these weapons down here, and I, if you want them all, you can have them. And he goes, well, no, I'm going to kill you. And he has to reload one. He puts in one bullet because he's fucking the man. That's all he and, needs is one. And the last words of uh, the robot from Grandma's Boy was, please sit on my face. And then he has all these. Now, now we know that he's fully like some kind. He has like some kind of artillery on him now that he's. He's loaded this, for bear. He's loaded for bear. And we don't we don't know what he's going to do with it yet. But we have a good idea, don't we? Please put us back on the track, sir. Anna then learns about Craig's death and that her boyfriend Zeke has been blamed for it. It's revealed that Spencer's boss died under mysterious circumstances, giving Spencer the promotion he always wanted. And he acted accordingly when he came home and he's like, I'm having a drink. I'm having a drink. You want to have a drink, David? Won't you please join me? Why, sure. I could do that. David gives Luke advice on dealing with bullies and gives him his butterfly knife. Anna asks Luke to research the numbers David has called on his phone. And if she steals his phone out of his pocket, he, he somehow knows when he's like doing the, uh, the pumpkin carving scene. Yeah, your mom's making pumpkin pie. At school, one of the bullies assaults Luke again. He's called uh, the F word, which is the new F word, not the old F word, the, the gay F word. But he fights back this time by punching now him in the face and hitting him with a yardstick. After they're both sent to the principal's office, David arrives and coerces the principal to give Luke a month of after school detention, threatens litigation if the principal expels him. David all of a sudden turns into like a lawyer. It's like, well, a gay student targeted with physical violence finally defends himself and you're what suspending him this is how real life works you know luke tells david of anna's suspicions but promises not to investigate any further or tell anyone else so the kid gets in trouble doesn't get expelled and uh the kid kind of is already knows what this guy is but like he's like his friend he's like you're my friend right dan stevens is like that's right buddy i'm your friend uh -huh. while david helps laura with the laundry major carver's team attacks the house but david kills all of them except for carver the first thought that I had when they show up at the home, there's like four of them total. And they know how dangerous this guy is. They trained him. They made him. And they only show up with like five people. Yeah, but those guys are like special ops. Um, yeah, but still, if you understand... it's stupid. If you understand the severity of the situation that you're walking into, you should at least be prepared. Maybe instead yeah. of five, you have 15 or yeah. 25. You yeah. know what I mean? Realizing his cover has been blown, David stabs Lore with a kitchen knife. He then drives away and kills Spencer as well. Carver picks up Anna and informs her of her parents' death. He reveals that David was a test subject in a military medical experiment and was programmed to kill anyone who might compromise his identity and is unlikely to be able to stop even if he wanted to. Now, this is a part in the film that I wish they had gone into more detail because just saying that he's programmed to kill somebody, I don't know, I like a little more detail as to what was the experiment, how did it work? Like, I like those little backstory moments Sure. Um, I don't know if we need him here. Like, you remember the movie Solo? With, yeah. Like, Solo was like a machine. This guy, I think we're we're supposed to, in our own thoughts at this point, know that this he's not a machine, but he's not human either. I don't know if we need to know exactly. He's not Terminator, but he's not human. You know what I mean? That's kind of but where you, I would have liked. You wanted a little, more information. A little more information. Yeah. Okay. What is he exactly? Like you said, he's not a machine. He's not anything he's not, superhuman. But he's not human. Right. So how exactly is he able to do all the things he's able to do? Just yeah, a little bit more. So he has like this weird intelligence to where he knows what he has to do. My thing is, dude, if he just showed up at those people's house and like they he like left after three days, what's his real, what's he really up to? What's he, what's his why? Right. That's what I mean. You don't have to spell out who David yeah. is for me, but maybe just, just a little bit more. I'm on your side now. At first I was like thinking, I don't want to know all the details about why this guy is not a machine or a human. Now I think I do want to know more about why he's not a machine or a human. Maybe just a little bit more than he was programmed to do this. 
Yeah. Like, is it, is, is it a microchip? What, what is it that did it? Because obviously we'll get to it, but he physically overcomes more than like most, than any human and most machines could overcome. I want answers and I would think that it would actually make more sense to have a one minute scene where they maybe described a little bit of what he really is. Meanwhile, David shoots Kristen and blows up the restaurant where she works. Yeah. Why did he, why'd he do that? He shot her right, right through the chest. And then he went like this. He uh, kind of took out the two grenades and just kind of like threw them down like kind of like in a cool way He goes to the school to kill Luke. Carver and Anna arrive at the school before David and enter a very elaborate and expensive haunted house setup. That would have never been done by a high school. So they get in there and uh, Carver's, he's like, how do you get out of here? Left, right, right, left, left, right, left, then straight. Got it? Yeah. So yeah, he and Mike and Monroe are walking through that thing and all of a sudden they get scared by one of the uh, actual Ugh! David turns off the lights and plays Anna's mix CD, then kills Luke's teacher and Carver with a box cutter. See you at the crossroads, Mr. Carver. Just like those terrorists used in 9-11, never forget. Anna shoots David with Carver's gun, but David stabs her in the leg and attempts to choke her as the gun misfires and damages a light, starting a fire. Like, oh, right in the hay. Fire. Fire. The fire in the hay. Luke stabs David twice with the butterfly knife, which does free Anna. David tells Luke that he did the right thing and gives him a thumbs up before collapsing. You did the right thing, okay? Do not feel bad about yourself. My name is Sling Blade. Some people call it a Kaiser Blade. They end up going outside and because the fire department's there and they're hanging out by the ambulance and the, the fire department and all that stuff is over there. And all of a sudden, Micah Monroe sees uh, someone in a fire suit come kind of walking out very, very, uh, very weirdly like they had maybe been maimed. Limping. Yeah, limping very, very much. And someone that maybe had been stabbed in the heart with a butterfly knife. And uh, and she looks and she sees the beautiful eyes of Dan Stevens through the mask. And she's like, what? the fuck and that wes is where the movie ends that's the film sir we'll right. see you at the crossroads mr carver but we won't see you at the crossroads mr dan stevens wes what are your final thoughts your grading on sure. the guest i'll give it a b plus i think it's great um it's a good thriller it's it's not a horror movie it's not it's not something we would normally do on this on the show i i don't know why i suggested this to us i know that i basically kind of figured that he hadn't seen it yet so i thought it would be fun to do it but then rewind watching it a couple of nights ago it was not fun to watch yet it was entertaining in a way that is not my normal like i like to watch like sleepaway cam you know what i mean this is different dan stevens was perfect micah monroe was perfect and it just it wasn't as fun as i thought it would be for us it's not a fun horror movie like we usually do it's just a, a good thriller with great acting and all the all the all the product comes up to a great sum it's great how do you feel about it sean how did you feel watching it for the first time i felt pretty good about watching this for the first time. I agree with you. This is not a horror movie, not even close, but it does have a couple of horror like elements to it. And I think it's executed very well. All the actors, I have to give my props to Dan Stevens and Micah Monroe. They in particular did a fantastic job. All the actors uh, really knocked it out of the park with this one. And yeah, it's a great little thriller. Uh, if you have like a, some downtime or maybe a evening in with nothing else to do, I would definitely recommend throw this on there. I'm 90% sure this is on Netflix right now. Yeah, it's a fun little movie. I, I yeah, definitely enjoyed it. I would give this thing a solid a B for yep, sure. Me too. Yep, we're, we're on, we're a simpatico like usual. Yeah, 